Hi all, it's Editor Daniel here. Uh, just to let you know, this episode is going to sound a wee bit different as we have a guest on, which meant that I had to record the Zoom call instead of what normally happens where me and Adam have separate audio files. So, just to let you know, there's going to be a wee bit of different in uh, quality of audio that you're perhaps used to a couple of times where the audio drops out a wee bit when one of us is speaking. However, it barely happens. You'll barely notice it. I just wanted to jump in at the start just in case it was noticeable. But please do enjoy. In my opinion, it's one of our best episodes that we've done. The guest that we have on is a great laugh. We have a great time. So I do hope you enjoy. Have fun. Hello and welcome back to the Perth to Paisley podcast. I am one of your hosts, Daniel McIver. This is episode number 38 after our weird 37 slash 37.5 debacle that we had last week. I hope you all understand what's going on. I am, as ever, joined by Adam Kennedy, my other host. Adam, how you doing? Uh, I'm not not too great, mate. I'd like to apologise for the amount of swearing, the F-bombs, etc. being dropped last week but those listening will no doubt understand my frustrations regarding the state of the football club that we love and watch every week um but what about yourself i'm all right i'm all right which is to be honest the best you can be just now when you're following hearts however we were thinking last week we we had quite a big episode of annoyance frustration anger and then the weekend happened and we were kind of sat you and me going right we said everything that we wanted to say last week. How are we going to make this fresh? Well, I'm putting a lot of pressure on these shoulders immediately and I've not really warned them about this. <laughs> However, we are absolutely delighted to be joined by an individual who contributes to the fourth official, which you will have absolutely have seen if you're on Scottish Football Twitter. He is a voice that I appreciate because he often goes down my route in trying to be positive. So it's going to be nice to have another, hopefully, hopefully, positive voice on the podcast it is Mr. Thomas Nicholl. Thomas, how are you doing? I'm good, Dan. I'm good. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me on. Um, uh, first up, just want to say, big big fan of the podcast. Um, you guys are doing a, a fantastic job um, in in challenging circumstances. And yeah, I, look, I'm perennially perennially optimistic, and I'm going to try and bring some kind of positivity to it. But I am also realistic, and uh, yeah, we can't we can't get away from the fact that things have been a bit difficult lately. But um, but can, can I kick you off with a bit of a funny story that happened at work today? Of course, you can. Right, so just by way of introducing myself a little bit, I I I work in sort of digital comms, right, for an energy company. It's boring as as you can imagine, right. Um, but part of that uh, is that we look after our kind of channels, internal and external channels. One of those is like an, an employee intranet. Um, so we try to put some some good stories on there to make people feel quite good about themselves, even though the world's a fucking shit show at the moment, right. <laughs> But this morning I come in and normally get sent through, right, here's the stories for today, here's what you need to get uploaded onto the channels throughout the course of the day. I'm thinking, right, fine, right, okay, normal kind of stuff here. And then one was titled Heartsbreaker. I was like, what, what, is, what is going on here? Right. So I, so I thought, I'm going to I'm gonna have to investigate this further. The, the picture for it is a broken heart of Midlothian crest. <laughs> and I thought, what is, what is happening here? Someone's, someone's at the wind-up. It turns out that Martin McLean the uh, the goal scorer of the winning goal for Brora Rangers last Tuesday is an employee of SSE <gasps> and I have to upload a feature article with a nice big interview with Martin talking about what an achievement it was to knock hearts out of the Scottish <laughs> Cup <laughs> so there you go there's my fantastic oh, my start to the week for you guys <laughs> oh my god as if as if it couldn't get any worse for Hearts fans. At least 99.9% of us can try and put it behind us. Never mind celebrating the guy that put us out. <laughs> hold, hold on a minute. <laughs> try and put it behind us. I've been hit with abuse this week like nothing I've ever seen. <laughs> Literally, the entire the rest of the country is quite rightly pissing themselves laughing at us. So, oh. It, yeah, but Adam, I, I don't know. I don't know about you, but you get you go to work, and at least for those few hours in the day, you're able to escape from that. Whereas here, I'm just <laughs> Monday morning first thing. Here, could you do a feature about the guy that scored the goal, the goal that knocked Hearts out of the Scottish Cup? Wow! <laughs> so there you go. That was my start to the week, guys. Well, that is that's 
that's never going to be beaten now. You've now ruined it for all future guests. They're never going to have a more depressing heart story than that. So, wow. I know. That's a superb start. I know. That's incredible. Well, then. I, that was unplanned as well, by the way. Don't think... And also, we appreciate the comments about the podcast. We will send you the check in the post. <laughs> it's much appreciated. <laughs> um, however, we will get into everything because we have so much stuff to speak about. And... We don't really have the order because a lot of stuff is going to be, you would think, oh, that's early in the week. Why aren't you speaking about it now? And blah, blah, blah. You'll hopefully understand as it goes. However, the first thing we're going to speak about is actually the most recent thing that has happened in our lives to do with hearts. And that is a couple of hours ago, it was confirmed by the club who I think it was their first tweet actually after the result of the weekend as they have kind of been radio silent this week. The first tweet in a while was that the club have announced that Christoph Berra, at the end of this season, when his contract is expiring, will not be getting a renewed deal. He will be leaving in the summer to go to pastures new. I don't. We don't know where that will be. Um, first of all, I'll come to you, Adam. What are your thoughts, first of all, on this news in isolation of this season? Um, in isolation of this season, I think it's is a welcome boost in what's proved a, a horrible week. If we're going that little bit further, obviously it is it is devastating. And Christoph Berra for me was a total total childhood hero. Um, that two thousand and six cup winning team, granted, being part of the squad, obviously he, he is he is a club legend. There's no there's no other way to go about it. But the past few years. Since your twenty first, actually, Daniel. Yes, it um, was on my twenty first birthday that his hamstring decided to detonate against Celtic. <laughs> so thank you for reminding me of that. That's all right, my pleasure. Um, since then, it's just been yeah, a, an absolute, an absolute horror show. Um, and as sad as it is, we're on about pastures new. I don't know quite to which level he'll drop, mm-hmm. but I can sort of see like Gary Naismith trying to get his sort of arm round him, try and convince him maybe to Edinburgh City maybe, wow. I don't know, that that could be a bit of a coup for that level but just need to wait and see, I, I mean I can't imagine Christoph Berra going part time but it certainly will be interesting to see where he ends up but for all that he's contributed before he's moved to Wolves and what have you and then obviously coming back in at the start of his second spell initially uh, he was fantastic and a, a loyal servant, a boyhood jamble that's ultimately lived the dream and there's nothing more I could say than thanks for everything Skipper Thomas, I'm assuming you're going to echo similar sentiments, or do you in fact hate Christoph Berra and they're <laughs> delighted that he's leaving? No, no, same as Adam. I'm, I'm gutted really. Um, not, not gutted that it's coming to an end, but just gutted in the way that it has come to an end for mm-hmm. him. Um, yeah, he, he was, he was fantastic uh, as a sort of young player coming through. I, I, I actually remember going through that sort of period of we had such a solid backline and it was. You know, Presley and Webster and then you'd feel a bit nervous if one of them couldn't play and Berra was coming in and then it only took a handful of games for you to realise actually no this guy's good like it's fine let's let's just get him in and um, and it, yeah he came back and again was just that one season in particular when he mm-hmm. when he made the uh, the team of the year in the Premiership and he was just um, you know on his own just a fantastic uh, player for us and, and really sort of contributed massively to where we finished in the league that year and uh, yeah, he's obviously had that injury, and and I, I'm not saying that that's the entire reason why his, his form has kind of gone off a cliff edge. I'm sure there's other other parts to it, but for a centre back who sort of made his name out of being quite um, physical, strong, um, really powerful in the air, but also quick. As soon as you take that pace away from him, it's always going to be a struggle, and um, it's kind of been it's been sad to watch how it's gone over the course of the last eighteen months. Um, and it's obviously the right thing that, that he moves on now, and it will just be interesting to see what, what happens next. That that shout of Edinburgh City's an interesting one. I wonder if they could maybe tempt him with um, a sort of player coach kind of deal that might make him start thinking about mm-hmm. the, the next next stage of his life. It is. Um, it's a very interesting point that that. I think some people actually expected Berra to stay at the club in a purely coaching capacity at the end of the season. However, he then made it very clear, I remember in the press up until the Scottish Cup final against Celtic at Christmas, he made it very clear that he wanted to keep playing games and 
that if he wasn't going to be guaranteed that game time here, then he would want to move on. So I think then writing was almost on the wall that, all right, okay, he's wanting to still be a regular player here and he's not going to get that. Uh, but I, I couldn't do any more than echo your sentiments. Uh, as Adam said, very much a boyhood hero. I've I've had the pleasure of speaking with him a couple of times. Um, and he is just... He's another one of those people that I think people are going to use the phrase Mr. Hearts a lot to describe a lot of individuals, particularly defenders. Levine, Nielsen, Berra. They all get kind of labelled with that. Oh, listen, I've got a lot of negative things to say about them, but they're Mr. Hearts. They love the club and stuff like that. But, yeah, I think... He goes with all the well wishes of every Hearts fan, really. But, Thomas, I'll come back to you first, actually. Do you see this as a sign that Nielsen is definitely staying on because he is being allowed to make decisions that pertain to next season, and especially about a transfer that we'll get on to speaking about? Or do you see this more as an individual situation where it's just, no, Bear has made the choice and it has no real bearing on Nielsen's future? Yeah, a difficult one to know, I guess, given it's not clear who's kind of made the call, is it? Whether it's Berra's decision to call time or, or Nielsen's. Um, yeah, I think I think everyone looking at it um, at all levels of the club, including probably Christoph himself, would would realise that the time's up. So I wouldn't read too much into it in terms of the, the managerial position and whether this is a clear sign that, that Nielsen is definitely going to be at the helm at the start of next season. But... Um, yeah, that's an interesting one. Hadn't thought about that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's hard, hard to tell. But I think I think everyone involved, whether it be uh, Joe Savage or, or Nielsen himself or the coaching staff or, or, or Christoph Berra himself, I, I reckon everyone knows that it's the, it's the right thing at the right time, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And sadly, that will lead us on now to the game at the weekend where it was almost <laughs> exemplified how it is the wrong time. Um, me and Adam spoke last week about how one of the main aspects of this game at the weekend was the reaction from the starting 11. It didn't really matter, we said, who played. It was more about what they do when they go out in the park to show that what happened on Tuesday night was an absolute disgrace and that they understood that. Now, Adam, when you saw the team, how did you feel going into it? wasn't all that bothered. I mean, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't watch the Queen of the South game. I'm just... I'm totally numb towards wanting to watch Hearts. They've taken enough money off me for effectively hee-haw, so they're not getting another penny excluding my Foundation of Hearts money and Hearts TV money to watch the highlights for the pod until changes happen. So to be honest, I think the significance of Tuesday night, I don't think it really mattered what 11 we put out. I think it's, I think it's deeper than the players that were involved up in the Highlands. I think it's an entire squad problem. So... And let's be frank, it wouldn't matter what you know how much they stuffed Queen of the South on Saturday. Ultimately, they're not going to make it up uh, to me. So, I, I don't know how I felt in, in, in honest answer to your question, mate. Thomas, did you watch the game? Yeah, yeah, I did. Do you know what this season? Just to sort of contextualise it a little bit, this season for me. I, I'll be the only Hearts fan that will probably say this, but I have loved this season, and the reason for that is <laughs> <laughs> no. I'll explain it. I'll explain it. Right, Good so, lord, you had no, such a brilliant start. You've got to hear me out. You've got to hear me out. Right. So the reason for that is, um, so when I was teens, early twenties, right, massive Hearts fan, would get myself to every game, make sure I was always there, home and away. And um, my life's just changed a bit since then, right? So I, I stay in Perth, by the way. So the, the Perth to Paisley ah, podcast okay. has truly made its way to Perth. Right. Um, but I also, I have a daughter from a previous relationship. And, and uh, honestly, my weekends are, t- are taken up. Um, I wouldn't have it any other way, but my weekends are taken up with her. So mm-hmm. um, a, a trip to Tyne Castle is, is a day out for me. And, and, you know, she's six. She couldn't be any less bothered about <laughs> football. So, um, so uh, you know, I'm not going to put her through all that. Um, so the last few years for me have very much been about enjoying that kind of family time and it's it's led to a little bit of distance between me and hearts in a strange kind of way 
this season, because it's kind of become a, a digital season in a way, it's kind of made me feel like I'm a proper Hearts fan again and I'm attending games the way that everyone else is attending games. So despite the football on show, I've loved the season from the point of view of really reconnecting with football and, and getting back into supporting Hearts. So regardless of what's going on, I don't really feel at the, at the minute like I would miss a game. Um, so yeah, so I, I made sure I was there for, for three o'clock ready to hear uh, Mr Dunsire um, try to... Uh, commentate his way positively <laughs> through through 90 minutes of absolutely turgid football at Tynecastle. He definitely <laughs> did try as well. That's quite an interesting point that you've made because friend of the podcast, and I'm assuming everyone who listens to this will know, Richard Cobb, um, he is based in London now and he is he has seen the very similar things that because he's in London for the last few years I think as well, he barely gets to go to Hearts games. So because of this... He's been able to see every single game that was available to watch. And it does create that discussion that when when the world has such a drastic change like this, it puts in everything into perspective in a positive and a negative way. But with the football, as you say, it allows people who potentially weren't able to get to games for whatever reason, whether that be as you say yourself, family reasons, or even financial because they can't spend money for a ticket. I know everybody's been chastising how much the streams are, and I'm not trying to take away from that. But it is cheaper. Unlikely so. Yeah, that's what I mean. But it's cheaper than a match day ticket. Yeah, I, do you know what? You're right. And I, Actually, um, Richard wrote a fantastic piece for Maroon Tinted Spectacles where he, where he said all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And it really resonated with me to, to the point that I reached out to him to say absolutely in the same boat as you. And that's part of what I've really enjoyed about this season is podcasts like this and um, people like Richard and, uh, you know, writing good stuff or sharing good content like this. That I, I feel more connected to um, football and to Hearts fans than I think I ever have done before. So there's a little sort of unintended positive that's come out of, um, you know, the horrible circumstances that we're all living in at the moment. Um, but yeah, you're right. There, there's there's stuff that I would love to see off the back of this season that we retain. Um, and I don't know whether it's realistic with TV deals and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. But, you know, I've, I've felt like I'm, I've been able to be a proper Hearts fan this season again. And, and I've loved that. And, you know, I, I, I agree, £18.50, is pretty obscene when you see some of the prices elsewhere. But at the same time, that's that's a household watching a game of football. So if, if I had, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if I was able to have my parents around, for example, who I used to attend games with, that you know, historically that would have been, what, 75, 80 quid for the yeah. three of us. And, you know, you can watch it now for 18.50. Um, but, you know, there's lots of considerations. There's no atmosphere. There's no real kind of match day experience, is there? But I think... Um, you know, there are some some good things that I would like to take away from this season, and I don't know whether necessarily they can offer uh, Hearts TV in, in circumstances like mine, but it's maybe one that's worth having a discussion about. See, this is why I got you on, because even <laughs> after the week we've had, I was like, he's going to be able to offer some positive insight. And not only that, you've, it's actually quite a good general point about life. Hold on, uh, you're saying I can't offer... I'm saying insight. you can't offer fucking anything. <laughs> Like what he's just offered there. That's what I'm saying here. Listen, mate, no merchandise, no pay per views. So either he's away or she's away. It's as simple as that. Is by he away, Thomas from this podcast for no, sure? No, oh, absolutely, absolutely not. He can stay. Thomas can stay. Right, we do sadly have to get into the negative aspect. As I'll be totally honest, I was out the room for the first two minutes of the game thinking it's fine. I'll also. Normally, uh, kind of loyal listeners to this will know that I often, every single match day, put £2 on Michael Smith. Be first goal scorer. Can I do that? So when he's not playing, I put it on Stephen Kingsley. He's currently hurt. So I went, know what I'm going to do for the first time ever, is put £2 on the first goal scorer to be Popescu. Now I <laughs> kind of was right, because <laughs> if you've not seen it, it's a minute and ten seconds in, I think. Basically, we get a goal kick. Ross Stewart plays it short to Popescu, who has all the time in the world, by the way. It's not like he's under pressure. He looks up. He's got options to his left. He's got options to his right. It could go long. But instead, he just simply passes it to the Queen of the South attacker, who plays in shields. And Ross Stewart is obviously surprised by this. And within two minutes... We're 1-0 down. Adam, what was going through your head at this moment? 
I obviously not watching the game. I was keeping, you know, a, a track of the Twitter feed. Um, <laughs> that being said, I have caught the highlights. Um, <sighs> let's be frank, the Queen's goals are an absolute disgrace. Um, <laughs> I think they may have deserved to win, but I think it's entirely our own doing. I'd, I'd just, I'd love to know what is going through Mihai Popescu's head for the first goal. I'd, I don't care if he made amends later on. That's the very least I'd expect. Which annoyed but... me, because why couldn't he have done that first and I would have been £50 <laughs> richer? Of course. But a couple of podcasts ago, I, I dubbed in the Bucharest bombs here and I've not seen anything different. Well, Thomas, you were like me positive before the game in, a, in a, a, as much as you can be after the week we've had were you th- were you thinking right just open in 10 keep it tight push forward look good and then that happens yeah I, I missed it as well the first, first couple <laughs> of minutes I um, thinking I'll be fine What's, what can really happen in the first couple of minutes and I, and I came back and, and obviously saw the, the highlight um, uh, just I, I don't know if people, may, people who maybe follow me on Twitter think that I, I am generally, I try to be a sort of positive guy and may, maybe they think that I watch games uh, really sort of calm and collected. I absolutely don't. I imagine myself being very much like Adam when he's went in you know, full rant mode on the podcast. And, and I, that's all I can say about Popescu's moment there is it's just, you see it and it's just, it's complete and utter madness. I mean, it's just, it's, it's not difficult. It's not a difficult pass. And he's, he's literally given it to a, a guy in Stephen Dobby who, okay, he's older now and his legs aren't what they were. He's still, still a talented footballer, clearly. But the thing is, you can negate that by just, you know, positioning him out, out of the game. But positioning him out of the game isn't giving him the ball with loads of time and space, 30 yards from goal, one minute in. And that's that's exactly what we've gone and done and, and yeah like you've said uh, Stuart's been kind of caught a little bit unawares um, still don't think he's done particularly well mm-hmm. but yeah we've just we've just gone and completely sold the you know the goal and given them a, a one goal head start right right at the beginning um, what I would say though is that you know your bet in a way is kind of it's not a million miles away I mean Popescu is is absolutely 100% responsible yeah, for the first goal in the game. So, can we try that with the bookies and see if they That's true, out, go on, mate, have you seen this? I deserve <laughs> summon for this, even a tenner. What, what price did you get him, mate? Uh, it was like 28 to 1 or something. And you stuck, what, a couple of quid on? Yeah. So you were getting, what, 58? Something like, like that. 58 back? 48. 48. Is that right? How am I the one who's responsible for the maths here? We've learned through previous episodes. No, well, let tw- me do 28 that. to 1, yeah, 58. 58 quid back. Yeah, that's Well, right. none of it oh. came. None of it came through. As Hearts then, for kind of 20 minutes, didn't really do much. We kept the ball in our usual way. The centre-halves got lots of it. And then, speaking about Berra, and speaking about how this is definitely the time to go, the ball is kind of one in the middle of the park by Queen of the South and Berra is about four yards further behind the entire back line which allows just the simplest of balls over the top and then, as Thomas said you could probably blame Ross Stewart a wee bit for the first goal Ross Stewart, I don't know what he's doing at this one because he doesn't really commit either way and he half comes out his goal and Thomas, we're two 0 down inside twenty minutes to Queen of the South at home. Mm. It's not great, is it? <laughs> That's an understatement. Um, yeah, no, it's it's not good, and you know, there, there's lots of things you could pick at for that for that goal. Um, the thing for me is, I I just don't really understand this whole Ross Stewart thing. I know he seems to be a good personality, and a lot of the, a lot of the players like him. Um, but he was the third choice Livingston goalkeeper for a reason, mm-hmm. and it, fr- it frustrates me that we've gone and it seemed to have made quite an effort to bring him in to make him our understudy to to Craig Gordon. When there's there's by all accounts what sounds like a very talented young goalkeeper at the club, um, and also a, a guy who has had his mistakes in in Bobby's Lamal, but. I think he's adequate as a backup, um, and I and I would rather see him playing these games um, than you know a, a pretty untried guy who, well, now that he has been tried, hasn't done much to convince me that he's he's anything other than than worthy of being a Livingston third choice goalkeeper. So, 
yeah, I, do, I don't really get that one and I've never really understood the, the thought process behind that one. And I, and I can't even really think how Nielsen or whoever else has, has sort of identified him within the coaching staff. I can't really think how they've ever come across him and decided, yeah, this guy's good. Let's get him in and let's make him <laughs> our, our number two. I don't, don't know where, the, where they'd ever cross paths, to be honest. Was he at the club when they beat us 5-0? He wouldn't have played. No, he wouldn't have played, but was he there? Maybe just somebody saw him on the bench there and was like, he'd do better. And then years later, it's been like, well, get mind him. He was sat on the bench. He looked fine. We'll get him in. Yeah, maybe somebody threw the water bottles one by one at him and he caught them all. And he thought, yeah, let's <laughs> exactly. let's go for that. <laughs> nah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to be like really, really mean on the guy. But I've just, I just don't see anything that makes me think he's he's capable of playing for Hearts. Like, so, yeah, and and Saturday certainly went. These guys are going to get the people that are on the fringes. They're going to get so few opportunities to demonstrate that they are capable and if you do stuff like that I mean the positioning was just horrible where, where what is he trying to do where, yeah. where is he thinking that the ball is going to go just strange all around strange so the sooner Mr Gordon gets back from international duty the better well you're not trying to tell me that Colin Doyle and Bobby Lamal are worse than he is I think Colin Doyle might be I've yeah been... I mean I, I I just wouldn't really say that there's much sort of distinguishable between any of them. If True, I'm honest. that's um, probably the best no. way to sum it up. If 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 two of them were already there and you know involved and at least knew how some of our defenders operated and and some of the things that could happen, maybe that gives them a head start on on this guy who doesn't. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, what's it's, what's the deal with Stuart? Is he is he planning to go back to Livingston at the end no he's joining us permanently that's the aim the aim is I, to sign him permanently I think I, I just look at it and maybe it's maybe it's as simple as a kind of cost cutting measure by get Colin Doyle out the door bring Ross Stewart in on less wages I, I have no idea there's there's no other sort of logical explanation that I can think of as to why we would opt, uh, opt to sign Ross Stewart personally it's even worse when uh, Craig Gordon in the press said I'm leaving Hearts in safe oh. hands, and then we have two of the worst <laughs> results in our history after it. I, I, I was literally going to say exactly that. I mean, like like Thomas rightly said, there's so much that you could sort of break down this goal with. I mean, why we're trying to execute an offside trap with as slow a back four as we've got is beyond me. It is a ridiculous finish from Connor Shields, like we say. Um, I think he was linked to the move to Dundee United in January, sort of as a suitable Lauren Shankland replacement, but obviously mm. that's not not kind of come to fruition um but that finish we just made him look like r9 ronaldo i mean it because ross stewart is essentially in no man's land and the jury's out for me i think that's very very fair we do get back into it as we see a me hyper pesky yes come on <laughs> let's go Yay. we're back it is a Mihai Popescu header from a corner. Finally, it feels like it's his 80th attempt, but he finally scores from a header. And at this point, Adam, were you thinking, right, we're going to get back into this now? To an extent, but again, don't really care. I mean, that's <laughs> speaks volumes about the guy that he scored his first Hearts goal in what's proved a meaningless encounter. Um, I mean, I think... <laughs> I don't want to sound too kind of cheesy and reminiscent here. I think Hearts teams of old might have had the character to claw themselves back into the game, and obviously we later do equalise. But needless to say, the result speaks for itself in that sense. Um, yeah, you know, it, perhaps I think to make amends for Tuesday, that's the sort of least that we as fans were expecting. Um, so, to an extent, it was quite refreshing to see us get back into the game and then haul ourselves level, but course we're going to get onto that uh, later on well Thomas as Adam has just mentioned we go into half time and then Laurie was saying on commentary that one of his biggest issues with that game was that it took us a further 20 minutes after the break to get that equaliser uh, Ewan Henderson came on and kind of just for the first time in the game it was a Hearts player running at someone Ewan Henderson runs at the left back Maxwell I think it is Plays a ball across, which probably should be cut out. But it's not. Liam Boyce has a lovely little flick. And then Armand Nandwele is there to get his fifth goal for the club. 
do you agree with Laurie where you were thinking, right, we've got that goal back, half time's come around, we're going to have a team talk, kind of kick up the arse at half time. Were you expecting us to get our goal back quicker than we did? Or were you thinking, nah, this is going to take, if we're going to get one back, it's going to take us a wee bit of time? Yeah, I think I think on the evidence of recent weeks, um, I, I was expecting it to be a bit of a slog from from that point onwards because Queens will have seen um, various teams set up against us with with a couple of banks of five and really make it hard for us, um, and we make it hard for ourselves as well in those those circumstances. Um, what I will say was I, I almost tweeted this, but I've been getting so much stick for trying to put at least one positive thing in my in my match summary tweets so um but i actually i actually really enjoyed the cameo from you and henderson i, mm-hmm. I thought i thought he i thought he was he was good when he came on um and and like you said he, he actually pretty much one of the first times he got the ball some direct running taking a man on and getting across into the box led to a goal so um that was kind of something that i almost was tempted to highlight but i was able to look at the big picture and see the fact that we just lost at home to Queen of the South after getting put out of the Scottish Cup by Brora <laughs> and I knew knew what my uh, notifications would do if I tried to be positive in any way. Um, no, I, when when we got back into it, I have to say by the way, um, I, I, what, what, I, don't, I don't want to be too positive, positive again. <laughs> um, Andy Halliday's set pieces were really good um, and that's something that has been bugging me for a while because I always remember him being quite a good set piece uh, taker, good corner delivery um, and I thought they were good throughout the game um, and it's it's actually frustrating me it's taken this long for us to, to realise it I don't know if he's been saying it um, for a while now but um, the set pieces were good and Popescu took his goal well um, yeah I, I was just pleased that we did get back on level terms because I thought that the second half was just going to be kind of as we've seen in the last few weeks which is um, a pretty uninspiring attacking display up against a you know, reasonably resolute defensive display. Um, so getting back on level terms when we did, with still enough game left to actually go and, and try and win it, I felt okay about. But then obviously, what happened happened. Why do you think that is? What do you think it is an element of? Listen, teams in this league kind of do it a lot more often. They know how to set themselves up. A lot of the managers are kind of more experienced. They've been in the job for longer, slash, been in the game for longer, so they know, they're smarter. Or do you think it's an element of we just fundamentally don't know how to break teams down when they set up defensively against us? Yeah, I don't know. Or it's is really it a bit difficult. of both? Yeah, I think there has to be an element of both. But the, the thing for me that's so hard to get my head around, and I, and I imagine it's the same for a lot of people, we beat Queen of the South 6-1 at Tynecastle earlier this season. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't come to Tynecastle and attack us and leave big open spaces and um you know and and that led to the win they they came then and and tried to be disciplined and resilient and they just weren't able to do so because we had good quick movement that led to a lot of goals how how can it have deteriorated so much mm-hmm. That now we're at a point where a young guy who doesn't get much game time is is the one who's coming on and, and looks like the only person interested in trying to take on a man in, in, a, in a sort of winger position and get across into the box. I I, I don't understand that and I, and I can't for the life of me put my finger on how that has happened. Adam, that was your frustration when we when we the obviously the now mystical episode thirty seven when we spoke about the Arbroath game. That was your issue where you were saying that it's all very well to say, listen, teams are going to set up defensively against us. But now we're, what, 22 games into the season? Surely, and especially as Thomas is saying, there's been instances of us breaking them down and doing it. Why is that that we've lost it? Is it because on that day we had Josh Ginelli and Ginelli was so crucial? But Ginelli came on and we were already 4-1 up, I think, when Ginelli came on. I'm just trying to think back. I mean, I think, I think Ollie Lee would have still been at the club as well, wouldn't he? Mm-hmm. So, and was up to up to his departure, I believe, the leading kind of assist uh, maker in the division. So, yeah. I, I mean, we can't be so dependent on one player such as Ollie Lee to to carve out opportunities. But I certainly think that it's a factor. And for all that he perhaps would play down, I think now we're starting to realise how crucial he was. To an extent, obviously Josh Janelli as well was a big, a big blow. Um, I don't know. I, 
Uh, even then, though, saying that, when we went down to Dumfries, Queens were a much better side than they looked at, at Tynecastle in, back in December. I mean, I, I quite rightly said that Queens were the worst opposition team that I'd seen come to Tynecastle, as was reflected in the scoreline. Um, so as much as we've declined, perhaps it's a case of our decline has simultaneously met their kind of upturn in fortunes. I, I, I don't know. It, it's it's a tricky one to kind of put your finger on, but perhaps sort of the departure of Ollie Lee, missing Josh Janelli, but then two players. I mean, is that really, is that cause for us to be as poor as we were on Saturday? I, I, I don't know. Yeah, and, and the, the two players, you know, the replacements for those arguably could be McInef and Gary Mackay Stephen. And I know that they've taken a bit of time to settle into life at Hearts. But are they are they particularly worse or different players to the guys that we're talking about? Mm-hmm. I, I I don't think so. And it's just, you know, how can there be such a swing? I, I'd completely take the point that Queens look a lot better than they were obviously when they first came to Tynecastle. But how can there be we're talking about a six goal swing here in, <laughs> in the space of what, fifteen games? Um I I don't I, I can't get my head around it and yeah, it, so much of it to me has to come down to a confidence issue amongst the squad at the moment and you know who carries the can for that well doesn't it matter how good or rubbish we are or they are when the third goal that Queen's scored goes in work. because I think it was Shields again actually on the left hand side plays a ball in and God, I don't even know how to explain this. Andy Irvin is standing on basically the penalty spot. He has no one around him. He could literally trap the ball, look up and play a ball. He could just stick his head on it. He could clear it in one way. But in a way, it almost looks like he looks at that bottom corner and goes, Ken what? I could finish this here. And just passes it into the bottom corner. Adam, is that the worst own goal you've seen a Hearts player score? Definitely up there. I th- Do you know what it reminded me of? It sort of reminded me of Jordan McGee up at Pataudry. What, when they um, caught it? No, but I mean, there's no real communication. And In Andy Irving's case, I don't know where the centre-halves are. I mean, I think you see Berra in the picture, but he's over the other side of the box. There's just no real need for it. It's a total sort of brain fart on Irving's behalf. Um and ultimately has, has cost us the game. I, I did see on Twitter, which did make me chuckle, these kind of <laughs> these kind of wacky suggestions that because he's a boyhood jambo, he's kind of made the sacrifice in order for Nielsen to get sacked, which <laughs> I'm not going to lie, did, uh, did make me chuckle. But as for the justification for doing it, I, I really do not know. It's, it's definitely one of the worst on goals I, I can recall in living memory. Thomas, can you explain it? No, I mean it's it's a left, a predominantly left-footed player trying to avoid using his right foot, and the the, the frustrating thing with that is that he's perfectly capable with mm-hmm. his right foot. You know, we see him, we see him use both feet um, throughout throughout the game. But I, I guess something coming in from from the sort of the, the touchline like that, and and maybe he thinks he's under more pressure than he is, and and that's the kind of point that I want to get to again. I feel like I'm hanging Ross Stewart out to dry here, but. Do you think that own goal happens if Craig Gordon is playing? No, I'm not because why I'm doesn't not... he claim it? Why doesn't he come out and claim it slash shout? Yeah, I mean, that that's more the point for me. I, I'm not necessarily saying that in the blink of an eye, Gordon would just come out and catch that, but I'm, I'm convinced that there'd be some kind of communication that calms Irving down a little bit because there's clearly a bit of a panic there um, mm-hmm. and, and he clearly doesn't quite know what's happening round about him and that's that's part of what's led to it. I mean... It's calamitous, isn't it? And it's embarrassing. And it's at the end of a week that's already been, you know, monumentally embarrassing for the club. And now you've got this social media clip that can go around that everyone can laugh at us, you know, even even more so. I mean, it's just, it's not great. And I feel for the guy, um, but at the same time, I don't because he's dicking us about with this contract, isn't he? So. <laughs> that's very fair. If Fuck there him. is, if there is, <laughs> no, wait, you can't, wait, we can't be seen. The, the boys who christened them the boys who can't be seen to be saying but nah fuck it yeah fuck it fuck it <laughs> after the Brora game I did say that if he doesn't want to be here then he should bounce so, yeah absolutely absolutely you know, you know, there comes a point I'm afraid boys 
Yeah, do, do you know my thought is I, I think he's a he's a really nice player and I love watching him and he's one of those ones that like the way he plays football looks good and I think that it's easy that on the eye, of, isn't it? Yeah, it attracts you to it more. It reminds me of um, uh, pronunciation. I'm going to struggle with it. The Greek guy that we had, Tioli, uh, a few Solis. seasons ago. Like yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it reminds me of him. But see, when we had him and he clearly was just here for six months and not interested in Hearts beyond that. We were all like, right, fine, fuck off then. Mm -hmm. um, and th there's an element of, right, this guy's, you know, meant to be hearts born and bred and loves the club and, and this, that and the next thing. Um, I think if this was some guy that we'd, that we'd brought in on a year's contract um, and he was making it pretty clear the, the way that Andy Irving has been, that he's not interested in beyond the end of the season, I think we would have all been, you know, quite happy to see him kicking his heels on the bench for the rest of the season. Um, so, yeah, I'm... I'm I don't don't wish any ill on the guy. I don't think he's been particularly well advised given his age mm -hmm. and the size of the club that he's at for his age. But yeah, if he if he's not wanting to be here and he's going to start kicking the ball in his own goal from <laughs> from the penalty spot and losing his games, then yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy for Scott McGill or someone like that to, yes. to feature in the centre midfield instead. Oh, yes, to Thomas. Yes, <laughs> come you, on. It, it it's just not. You are a loyal listener. You try to grind my gears. I feel like... <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's not. It's not anything about me thinking that Scott McGill is the future for Hearts. He might be. He might not be. Yes. But it's just <laughs> for now. It's just more about. Um, I, I just don't like the way that Irving appears to be approaching games. I just don't. I don't. Don't like his demeanour. Does he think he's better than than us now? Does he think? I think he does. You know, is he just biding? Is he just biding his time to I, get? That? I, don't like I, it. I, also, I also think he does, and I think. This is a very interesting point because I'd imagine we'll touch on kind of media stuff later on. Um, but Craig Levine mentioned on Sports Sound that he spoke about the championship being sort of a, a perfect opportunity for young players to show what they can do. Um, he also mentioned kind of that Robbie maybe isn't too confident in, in throwing them in. Why, why do we think that is? Why wasn't that kind of a, a sort of not an objective of, as such, but like some, something, some sort of bonus with regards to the season. Because if we deem ourselves too good for this league, as some in the club may well believe, then why should we not be betting in a youngster or two? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for no, I, you, you're right, and it's it's the it's the wing positions that frustrate me most because um, we've brought in so much. Um, Shit. So much dross in those positions. <laughs> yeah, try to pick my words carefully. <laughs> um, yeah, no, we've just brought in guys that um, none of them. Uh, well, Janelle is a bit of a separate issue, and, and he looked um, actually quite good, but clearly doesn't have um, you know a season in him. Fifteen minutes in the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, uh, we've had Roberts, Freer, Castanier. Um, I would even throw uh, GMS into the mix, and we know that he's capable of more. But at the moment, based on what we've seen. Any of these guys better than you and Henderson? Any of these guys better than Moore, who's now you know mm -hmm. doing it for another team? I, I just don't think that they are. And the the strange thing about that is that we all remember Robbie's first time in the Championship, and that that team was you know littered with good young talent. Nicholson, mm -hmm. Walker, I'm going to struggle to remember them all now, but there there was good young talent in that team in those positions. And yeah, Billy King was one as well. You know, did he not get like 16, 17 assists yeah. throughout the course of the season and, and a good handful of goals as well? Something's changed in Robbie um, over over the course of the last six or seven years. Um, maybe he doesn't think that these players are are up to the same standard as the guys that that we had last time round, but they're not they're not worse than the players that he's brought in, mm -hmm. and that's that's strange. Like why why not realise that and then just you know give them give them a chance. Absolutely. Could not agree more. Uh, we will get more into that, actually, mm -hmm. as we speak about we certainly will. a potential potential signing. Um, <laughs> however, just to finalise on the game, a wee bit of controversy at the end because it is hot. So you can't have just a game where we get outbeaten. There has to be some form of an excuse. Jamie Walker hits the byline. Cross the ball in. Armour Nandwale equalises in the 92nd minute or whatever and you think... Oh my God, we're actually celebrating a three-all draw. But then, <laughs> no, the linesman has the flag up. Listen, I'll just both ask you at once. Was the ball in? Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> Adam? Uh, didn't see it, can't comment. Oh, for fuck, he said you've watched the highlights! 
Yeah, well, sorry, I, I watched Andy Irving's mishap, and then thought, ah, do you know what? I can't, I can't be bothered. Fuck no. right, Thomas, explain no, to Adam. No, explain but, to Adam what no, happened. I mean, I mean, I mean, I've I've seen kind of talk about it, but I mean, what do you want me to do? Get absolutely delighted because then we've clawed ourselves level against, with all due respect, Queen of the South at home. Mm-hmm. I just, I, honestly, mate, I'm, I'm numb. <laughs> it's got to 40 minutes in and he's now having his run. Here I no, go. No, well, this, this is what I was going to say because folk are expecting me to rant, but what what more can I say? I, I think my talking's been done by various um, hearts related figures on upon just about any media outlet that you can find, so it is what it is. I right. didn't see it, don't care. Thomas, we'll have a chat about it. What do you think? So you think it was in? Yeah, no, I mean, I I totally understand uh, how Adam's feeling, and I've been there so many times myself as as a Hearts fan. Um, yeah, I guess purely from the point of view of just analysing the moment in the game and, and taking all emotion out of it, um, from the angles that we can see, and and to me, to the sort of to the sort of live eye as it was happening. It didn't look like it had gone out. I actually thought your your favourite player, Mr. Walker, had made yeah. a, a really good effort to <laughs> to, to get around the defender and, and and keep it in and, and showed a good bit of desire that's been lacking from from a lot of people. Um, yeah, it it didn't look like it had gone out. Um, but my my worst sort of thought about it as it happened was, oh no, is this is this the thing that is now the excuse for mm-hmm. why we've not won this game? Is yeah. this what we're going to hear about afterwards? Is well, we should have drawn today. And to Adam's point, that would have absolutely frustrated the life out of me because we're talking then as if the draw would have been in some kind of way acceptable. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, in some circumstances, you know, you can draw a game and it can be a bit of a blip and you can get over it. But given how the week had gone for Hearts, the reaction had to be so much better than that. Um and it was mentioned, but I don't think there was too much of a deal made of it afterwards. But yeah, if I'm asked purely about whether I think it was in or not, um, I, I think it probably was. Yeah, I, I agree. And my biggest sadness out of this is that Nandwale got his goal struck off, which would have been two, <laughs> and it would have made him have played nine games, scored six, set up two, which is like one of the best January signings we've ever had in terms of impact. He's been he's been very good. Um, however, yes, it did finish three two. We will get into comments made in the media during this week, because there's a fucking lot of them. Uh, However, we don't want to touch on it a lot, but listen, we're a Hearts fan podcast. We need to speak about everything that happened. There was a protest. It was a very little one, thankfully. There was, I think I saw on the Daily Record, it was like less than 100 people or something like that. Um, Listen, totally understand that we're angry. Listen, listen to us for the last forty-seven minutes. We're pissed off. I wasn't behind it before the allegations. I know, uh, and that's what I was about to say. I was about to say, is that why you were watching the game? You were there. <laughs> were you the guy with the Daniel Stendel coat? Have you seen that? <laughs> I saw that. I want to know where he's got that. that yeah, get me one of them. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, listen. Totally understand the frustration, but. There is a pandemic going on, lads. Like, please don't turn up. And the amount of people who were like, listen, if they stick to regulations. Well, they are, that's not an option. They wouldn't have got to stick to regulations if they went down, which we saw. And it's quite frustrating. But the thing that isn't frustrating and does need to be called out is the banner that was put up at Ann Budge's house. Listen, I said this on Twitter and it got a bit of traction, but be angry at the players in the park, be angry at the manager, be angry at the board, be angry at Anne Butch. Put your banners in and around Town Castle and stuff like that. Don't go to a 73-year-old woman's house and leave threatening messages. For fuck's sake. Like, grow up, please. So, don't worry, focus on it too much, but I had a couple of people say, please mention it in the podcast so that we have your opinion. So there we go, it is mentioned. However... We'll move on to the media attention. Adam, this is kind of your section, because you've got opinions on all the stuff. I mean, yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, I've, I've obviously listened to Sports Sound. The, the Saturday one was kind of sort of the more important one. That being said, obviously we've had we Aaron Fraser on, uh, on the podcast before, and I thought he was absolutely superb. 
uh, on Sports Sound. I think it was on his birthday in midweek. So belated happy birthday, Aaron, if you're yeah. listening. Um, on top of the fact that he then got a happy birthday from <sighs> uh, Big Elvis, Daniel. So that's uh, that's I've, like your. I've never been more like, jealous in my life. I was <laughs> gutted. So obviously no, that he was he was excellent on Wednesday, and I thought he listen. There's a there's a bright future for that young man. But before we get into sports sound, I, I I couldn't help but message uh, Sam Nicholson as well, who oh, yeah, of obviously course. was a, a couple of years above me at school, and I just felt the need to message Sam and say why is it not working for for Robbie this time round, mate? And he said we're thirteen points clear, couple bad results, but we'll be fine. Once we are back in the Premiership, if Robbie gets a chance to build a team, we will be fine. Believe me. Stick by him. It's just it's just tough times. Nothing we aren't used to being jambos. So then I came back to him saying, well, the football's been boring for months, uh, weeks and months, Sam. He says he admittedly hasn't managed to watch much, just the highlights, but every team goes through bad patches where they don't play good football and stuff, but it will come good. Remember the last time people wanted them out, we went on a downward spiral. I know how you feel with the results not being good, but they will turn it around. The main objective is to get promoted, to which I came back saying, we've been dumped out of the cups by two part-time teams, though that's not good enough. I'm confident Hearts could win that league with me up front and I never played when I was younger, which I didn't. Um, and basically, we just, we, we were just back and forth and he then said, I'd asked what was it kind of like working under Robbie first time round, and he said it was very good, uh, that Robbie had them all on the same page, everyone knew what was expected of them so that even if they played bad, they managed to grind out results and managed to obviously win the championship, get third the season after, and play in the Europa League, which hadn't been done in 10 years, he said. So he loved it. I don't get that same impression. I know Craig Halkett's came out and said what he said. Surely after Saturday, you're going to do it. You're going to do absolutely everything in your power to make amends for Tuesday, given how horrible it was. And from what I've heard through various media sources, that was not the case. I mean, Alan Preston on Sports Sound. I echoed his thoughts and I expected a reaction if I'm if I'm being totally honest. He described the performance as gutless and disgraceful and by all accounts is proved spot on. Um said that Queens had thoroughly deserved their victory. He then said that we've been stuttering and struggling over the line, um, which is obviously I mean, he must be listening to Perth Paisley and copying my material because that's exactly <laughs> what I've been saying, but I just think there was a quote that was picked up and to me it said um, give us your money and shut up meaning that it was obviously highlighting the disconnect from board and fans Um, but I I thought he was excellent and basically perfectly summed up exactly what we're all thinking Thomas what do you think because obviously during this season me and Adam have kind of been at odds where before the Brora game I feel like you and me were quite similar which Mm -hmm. I feel is the nature of kind of the season that it's been that Adam and me have been on opposite sides and then we kind of have people who are on our side or whatever you want to call it but basically (laughs) our stance seemed to be and correct me if I'm wrong if you think I'm just talking shit here that yeah listen we're not performing at the levels that everybody would love to be however we're still getting the results we're still top of the week on our own merits but then this week has happened and it's kind of made not everybody, what, what stuff that Adam and everybody was saying completely makes sense and me completely 180, but more going, yeah, this isn't good enough. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, and I have, I've listened to the podcast all season. Um, I, I think, I think generally I would, I would say I, I'm quite aligned to your way of thinking, Dan, but I, I, I agree with a, a lot of what Adam's saying. And I think that this week is, is, the last week that we've all experienced has changed a lot of things in a lot of people's minds. Um, what you were saying there, Adam, about the exchange you had with um, Sam is, is really interesting. Um, because if I'm honest, and I'm, I'm ready to be torn strips off of here, I, I, I agree with a lot of it. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, taking this season into isolation, it's not been great. And, and frankly, if this was if Robbie Nielsen was someone who we had just brought in this season and we'd had no previous experience of, I would feel very much the same. I would think, right, let's get to the end of the season and let's change it up and let's do something better. Um, for me, I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to get slagged for this. For me, Robbie just has enough in the bank based on his two spells in charge with Hearts, but also 
thrown into the bargain with that is what happened when he was binned off last time and what we were mm-hmm. left with. Um, and I'm just so terrified of that happening again. Um, and I know that there's there's this kind of there's this growing element amongst the the Hearts fan base that this team will come straight back down. This, this team will definitely come straight back down. And you hear it a lot. Um, I don't agree with that because I don't think that Hamilton Ackies would be 16, well, sorry, 13 points clear at the top of the championship this season. I don't think that Ross County or Kilmarnock or Motherwell, I don't think that Aberdeen, who have scored one goal in 10 games, maybe would even be that far ahead in this league this season of all seasons. I'm not saying that we're going to go and we're going to be top four next season. Um, and I have some significant concerns about the playing squad that we have and, and the management. I do need to say that because I've been surprised at how demotivated the team has been this season. But generally speaking, I do still fall in the camp, which is similar to what um, what Sam's been saying, in that he has he has a track record of doing better than this. And I would... I, I, I've had a lot of soul searching with it over the last week because I've been very angry about some of the stuff that's happened but I have come back around to a place of I want him to get around the fixtures at the start of next season um, and, and see where we go from there but but trust me if we're if we're not looking where we need to be after around the fixtures I'll be the first one saying look it's not going to work um, but throwing into the mix with all of that um, and something that I've been saying quite a lot to my old man and stuff like that I'm, I'm sceptical about whether it's going to be successful with Nielsen um, for a number of reasons, but mainly because um, I don't know a football club anywhere ever that has been successful with such a divided fan base. Mm-hmm. And rightly or wrongly, people don't like Robbie Nielsen, and some of them have not liked him from the outset. Some of them have grown to not like him very much. And some people, because there's such a you know, a, a strong element that, that don't like him. Some people kind of feel a bit defensive of him and it means that we're all arguing with each other mm-hmm. and there's no unity about the place. I remember when Shabba Lazlo came in at Hearts and he was, he was a bit of a character, right? But one of the things that he's... A word that he obsessed over was together and he meant together in terms of the people at the club, the staff, the the cooks, the, you know, uh, the people that are cleaning boots or getting the strips sorted, the fans... He wanted everyone to be together because he felt like the only way that you could be successful was by all sort of being on the same page and fighting for the same thing. And I thought we might have had that this season after everything that happened last summer. I thought we might have had a bit of unity and a bit of togetherness. And unfortunately, the appointment of Nielsen has meant that that was just never going to happen because immediately the fan base is split. And now you've got a, a sort of group of fans that are kind of saying, well, I told you so, and quite rightly saying that, but you've still got a group of fans that are kind of, and it's a, it's, a, it's a diminishing group of fans, but there's still a group of fans that are kind of saying, nah, come on, let's get over the line and then see what happens next season. It's a, it's a fucking difficult one. Um, and I'm kind of at a point where if he goes, I can understand why that would happen and I'd feel excited about the change. If he's stuck around and got a chance at a round of fixtures next season, I wouldn't be devastated by it either. So... There's my kind of fence-sitting answer. See, wait, Adam, wait before you say anything. (laughs) Because I've been waiting for this kind of point for a while. (laughs) Because I I almost, word for word, agree with you. Right? Because, in the sense of, the reason why I said on last week's episode that I feel Nielsen has to go, and on Twitter and stuff like that, is not because it's Nielsen and this season. Because, as I've said, I've been not fine with the way the season's been going but I said at the start of the year if we won every single game 1-0 and it meant that we won the league I didn't care I said if we won the league by a point I didn't care because we were going to win the league that is the number one priority for me the only reason I said that I want Nielsen out in t- in last episode is because I just felt that no Hearts manager whether it was we appointed Pep Guardiola the day before then you get beat off Brora. I feel like no Hearts manager can survive that. But I come at that from a place of no maliciousness. I really don't, and I fully, fully agree with you that there are some individuals within the Hearts fan base that have been almost waiting for this, where they've mm. been like, see, exactly what you said, like, see, told you so, it wasn't a go to work. And they have preconceived notions of what Nielsen was going to do. A lot of that can be founded in the obviously infamous Hibs games where some fans would never go to forgive him for that and listen I'm not telling you I'm not saying that's right or wrong 
I personally don't hold that too much against him because of we, I look at the, again, the meme about this fucking show is that I look at the bigger picture and that I'm pragmatic and stuff like that. <laughs> um, but no, I, f- I fully, fully agree with what, everything that you've just said. Yeah, but listen, see those fans that are saying I told you so right now, like, they're, they're right. Yeah, of course. And I can't argue it. Yeah. Like, they're, they're, abs- they're absolutely right. Like, it's the football has regressed over the course of the season to the point that, um, you know, people quite rightly are saying, I'm not spending 20 quid to watch that. And and I totally understand that. And, and something I'm you would have seen, I, I got a bit of stick um, last week. I, 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 I felt I terrible. I, br- I brought you <laughs> in here. <laughs> no, ah, no, you're, you're, you're fine, right? Because I put myself out there for this for this exact kind of discussion, right? But I got a bit, bit of stick where basically, people were basically saying, you know, how can you be happy with this? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not happy with it, right? I, it's not good. Um, and there are far too many players that are below the standard for hearts and they're playing in a way that is, you know, is, is not even getting the best out of them for the level that they should be. Um, but I, I have been able throughout the course of the season to step back from it a little bit and, and see where we've been, what's happened over the course of the last 18 months or so. In fact, in fact, more than that. And, and I just want us to get back to the premiership and then, you know, let's, let's take it from there and, like I can say, I'm not not asking for the world here for Nielsen, but I think a round of fixtures isn't a ridiculous thing to suggest. But I think Adam's probably going to no. come in and say, "Well, there's there's a season wasted if you give him a round of fixtures." <laughs> and you know what? I, he's probably right. <laughs> Don't listen to it. I, I mean, I, I get all of that. I think going back to this whole unity thing, I think this this is where your concerns may develop because we've obviously talked about playing style and. Listen, there's there's unattached managers at, at the minute. Um, one of which, you know, has been touted by a, a, I don't want to say a, a shocking source, but certainly not a, a you know. It's a shocking source, Adam. It's a, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> it's a bad source that is has okay. no evidence behind it. But but I think uh, is your concern sort of? I mean, this is purely hypothetical. I'm not going to say that this is going to happen. But say we do sack Robbie. And Derek McInnes comes in, oh, fuck's sake. and then and then the fan base are half divided by some saying, "Well, Derek McInnes plays shit football. We want to be entertained or whatever." Do you feel as though Hearts have to make? I mean, it's obvious to say that Hearts have to make the right appointment, but is there sort of anything? I guess is Alex Neil would he connect the entire whole fan base, and then you could sort of say, "Well, I'm fine with getting rid of Robbie." Provided that we appoint him and not Derek McInnes, who will divide opinion, Stephen Robinson, who will divide opinion, or whatever. Mm. Yeah, I, I am to, to a sense, but the thing, the difficulty with all that is that unity doesn't guarantee success because this, you know, this happened before Nielsen left, and I remember everyone being excited about the appointment of Ian Cathro, and people might people might deny it now, right? But at the time. We were all right. We were all like, "Hey, okay, well, this is to work, didn't they? yeah, this, exactly." And this is different. And this is, you know, if you're ever going to challenge, you know, the status quo in Scotland, which is the old firm win everything, you've got to do something a bit different. And this is different. Look at his coaching credentials. Look at where he's been. Let's go for it. And everyone was behind it. And we all know what happened there. So that that's my trepidation when it comes to right. Nielsen's done. Let's get him out and let's bring in someone like Alex Neil, who would, yeah, I think would unite the fan base. But is He's there a guarantee that it would work? Inspiring, kind of out, out the certainly the trio that I've suggested, and mm. you know, I think there'd be a lot kind of on a managerial merry-go-round that would be touted for the Heartscape. Whereas I think he, to me anyway, would seem the obvious choice. It's just trying to tempt him to Hearts, but I mean, it, it, it's all it's all pie in the sky. There's no substance to it, and I I can appreciate your concerns. You've yeah, it, that's that's fair enough, mate. Yeah, and and look, I, I'm a firm believer that everyone has their own opinions, and, and this was when we had our uh, our little um, social media exchanges last last weekend. That that was the thing that I was wanted to stress most, is because I think a lot of people were were sort of saying, "Well, your opinion's wrong," and and look, I, my opinion is my opinion, um, and I, and I wouldn't I wouldn't say anything about anyone else's. I I completely understand why people have got to where they've got to with Nielsen and with Hearts at the moment, and like I said, if 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 everything sort of came to an end for Nielsen at the end of the season, we got promotion and then we were a bit more of a blank canvas and able to start again, I'd be I'd be cool with that and I'd be excited about what lies ahead. 
Um, but, but similarly, I, I, I know I'm in the minority, but I'm, I'm kind of OK with him getting around the fixtures at least next season to, to see where it goes. Um, but I'd definitely be one of the first to say that this isn't working if at the end of that round of fixtures we're sitting in 10th and we're you know, struggling, to, struggling to put performances together, for sure. Well, Thomas, don't worry, because even if you're in that minority, I'm in that minority with you. Don't worry. No, oh, well, the majority here then, two versus one. Yeah, exactly. Robbie, Robbie Nielsen must stay. Exactly. That is the official <laughs> view of the Perth to Paisley podcast now. <laughs> so that's where we are. Um, just, Fantastic. <laughs> just as we can, kind of... Uh, oh, yeah, go, Thomas, go. No, I was, I, can I say something about the Anne Budge stuff? Um, of course you because can. I, you, you, you guys, you guys get to do this every week, but this is this is my little opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> the floor is yours. <laughs> um, no, like I, I, I again, I, big picture for me is that Hearts as a club in, in my lifetime have been um, chronically mismanaged by a number of people. We had Robinson. Um, and then we had Vladimir Romanov, and I know that there was a lot. There's a lot of jokes that come out of the Romanov era and everything like that. But you guys might not have a podcast if Romanov had been left to mm-hmm. to sort of leave the mess that he wanted to leave. Um, and you might also not have had a podcast if Anne Budge hadn't come in. And you know, a, a fairly active football fan, but by all accounts, didn't seem desperate to run a football club. Um, I know that that's making it way too simple and saying we should defend her at all costs because of that. I, I'm, I'm not saying that whatsoever. Um, but she's the reason that Hearts are still here and, and I'd hate for Hearts fans to forget that and I, and I hope that her legacy um, stays that way and her, and her legacy kind of remains the, the, you know, the nice, nice football stadium that we have and some of the success that we have had in, in her time. Um, I think that some of the personal stuff that's been happening, um, you know, th- there's been a lot of stuff about daft old women comments mm. about her appearance and things like mm. that it leaves a really really sour taste for me and it's something that i would like to see stop so if there's anyone that's listening to this that has partaken in anything like that then just please fucking stop it because you're embarrassing yourself and you're embarrassing the club and um, but beyond that what i would say is that Anne, Anne budge is not a football person any more than than me or 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 you guys she, she's a she's a fan at the end of the day and I think that what she's tried to do is put football people next to her that she can trust and she can rely on their opinions. And for a, a large chunk of that, it's been Craig Levine. And I think that he has to carry the can for a lot of the poor decisions that were made um, for the last five or six years. Um, and someone who I think there's been a real clamour over the last few days, and I've seen quite a few tweets about Jim Jeffries. Um, let's get Jeffries back in the dugout. Surely it can't be any worse than Nielsen, this, that and the next thing. Jim Jeffries has been her advisor on football matters over the course of the last eight or nine months. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Alf JJ's, you know, been responsible for a lot of successful times at Hearts. Has he not got to take a bit of the responsibility here? I'm sure he would have been consulted about the appointment of Robbie Nielsen and his coaching staff. So is there anyone willing to say anything about his role in the month? I was about to say, if, you, if, you're, if, probably... if you're worried wow. about getting abused for sticking up for <laughs> Nielsen, suddenly turning on Jet is going to mean that folk are going to come to pair. And yeah, well, <laughs> like, I, like I said again, it's, it's football's a game about opinions, isn't it? But I'm just, I'm a little bit surprised um, that. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I'm, I'm just a little bit surprised that his, his, that his name's only been brought into it for the, over the last few days, from me for Hearts fans as a suggested solution to the problem, um, and he's been he's been a part of the club for the for the most of the last year. Um, I'm, not, I'm not about to say that this is all he's doing. It, it isn't like he's he's an advisor, and um, you know he's an advisor for, from a sort of well, he's an old school sort of football guy, isn't he? So um, he's, he's an advisor that's been there to help and budge. Um, but I'm just I would just be interested to know what the kind of conversations have been like between um, Anne and the board and uh, and the Jet because yeah, has he has, has it not been part of his role to make the right appointments in terms of manager, coaching staff, and, and probably be consulted on a lot of things like player recruitment and, and stuff like that. Right. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a way off the mark, guys. Tell so, me. so before Adam, I think, is going to kill you, I'll jump in first. <laughs> I, I agree. I'll say this. I'll be completely honest. I agree. I have had issue with people who have said, in the same way that you just said there, where it's like, Everybody sees what's going on here and goes, right, let's get Jeffries back in, let's get Levine back in, let's get Presley in and stuff like that. I'm sick and tired 
of having ex players as our managers. And I know we did that with Cathro. It didn't work. <laughs> and we got somebody who wasn't a manager. It didn't work. But I fully agree. Part of the problem is that we keep looking backwards and we keep going, right, who can we rely on from the past? Now, people will drag up a tweet that I sent this past week where I said, I would like either Gary Locke or Andy Kirk to be take, caretaker manager if it meant that we could get somebody like Alex Neal, not Derek McInnes. But if the rule was that, oh, we get Alex Neal in four weeks, but we have to let Nielsen go now, I'd be like, right, I, my number one choice would be Andy Kirk because I think, despite being an um, ex-player, it's a fresh perspective and I'd be very interested to see what he can do. However, you're so you're so spot on. Jeffries, none of us is saying that Jeffries is at fault here in terms of what's going on in the park and that if there's one name you lay blame at, it's Jim Jeffries. But... He has been on that consultant team, at the very least. And everybody involved, if everybody who's saying on Twitter, sack the board, sack the management and stuff like that, that includes Jeffries. I'm not saying he's on the board, but I'm saying he's part of the infrastructure in the back room of the club. If you want to rip it all out, that includes Jeffries. Adam, are you going to kill us both? No, I, I, I thought you just wanted to go to say I, anything there. I thought you were just going to be silent and leave. I, I was very inclined to do so. I, I, I just don't, I don't know what to respond. I think that this is the key thing for me. I think if somebody comes in, it has got to be somebody that's totally external to Hearts. And I know Daniel's shut down the Derek McInnes shout, but surely with the job that he's done at Aberdeen and seeing how they've progressed under his stewardship as manager could we not follow a similar path? but my my or... point my point against that is that we were doing that with robbie when he left now no what... of course mate but then Cathro came in and it's all gone to pot of course and but we're fair, now back with the guy who was doing it no of course but jeffries wasn't on the scene then that was under levine no, I know, but the point is... Just, well, then that even proves it further, because when Jeffries wasn't here, Nielsen was class. And now that Jeffries <laughs> is here, he's doing... So, you know what, Thomas? Right. You're right. No, Fully no, blame you're Jeffries. Right. You're right. It's all on Jim Jeffries. I mean, really... Come on. No, like, I, I, I absolutely, absolutely, I'm not saying that. And I wouldn't want that to be the headline off the back of this. <laughs> that's what the title's going to be. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the title. I, I can imagine what, um, what Twitter would be like. <laughs> but, but like, uh, Anne, Anne Budge has made her fortune in IT and in business, right? Mm-hmm. And that's where her success lies. And if I was to go into IT... I would want to bring a consultant who knows that world and consult me on what the right decisions to make in that world are. And Anne Budge has done the same thing in reverse here. And I just think that he, Jim, Jim Jeffries was brought in to be that kind of experienced footballing consultant. And I'm not, obviously, there's blame that lies at a number of people's door for the the way that the season has gone and particularly you know going out of the cups in the way that we've gone and the deterioration in form over the course of the season and i'm not saying that i want people to be saying well jeffrey's what have you done about this i'm just surprised to see that everyone well not everyone but i've just surprised over the last the course of last week to see quite a bit of social media traction in jim jeffrey's is the solution um you know let's get him back in the dugout and and i'm just saying i think he's contributed to it because i don't think that Anne budge will have made a single footballing decision um or, or, or a big footballing decision over the course of the last eight or nine months without having some kind of conversation with jeffrey's but even then it's only for a handful of games and to be honest if you're asking me from the outside looking in i feel as though jim jeffrey's is old school and you know, the players that played under Jeffries loved it. Like, they, they talk about their admiration for him even still to this day. I just feel as though it's perhaps... Kevin Kyle said something along the lines of, he makes, he makes you feel as though you're playing for his club, so you cannot be a dud. And to me, even if it is for only a handful of games, might he give that those players the kind of kick up the arse for the last few weeks whilst we take our time evaluate things before appointing a successor to Nielsen. If, I mean, listen, he's not going anywhere, but that's just in, you know, in theory. Um, I just... The game's just changed at, a lot, though, even in the 10 no, years that he's been and, away. And, and you're right, and Levine said that on Sports Sound as well, that you can't really shout to the players. Something else I wanted to 
to talk about. I love that this is just dissented at the end. By the way, <laughs> I've got this point and all. <laughs> no, but, but, but well, listen, this could go on for hours upon end. <laughs> um, but as much as I'm sick of listening to Robbie, his, his post-match presser on Sports Sound I found really damning. Um, obviously, we're going to touch on these comments that he's come out with regarding, you know, English team. Oh, we have, so, because I, I think we have very different views on the comments. But, <laughs> well, aside from the fact that we should be, and I quote, enjoying the football, um, he said, we're playing against teams that probably haven't played here for a long time. I burst out laughing at that. That made me actually what, laugh. What on earth is that even supposed to mean? That, that's like saying Sterling Albion should be putting on a show for their supporters on their rear trip to Tynecastle. Like, why? And why are we putting games down to individual errors as well? Like, it just... I, I mean, Saturday, to an extent, yeah, we could. I was about to say, just, you've picked the worst oh. week to say you can't blame individual errors when two <laughs> out of the three goals were individual errors. Arguably three. Uh, uh, three, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but still, it's like... It's in the help of saying, like, we're playing against teams that probably haven't played here for a long time. What is that? It's, but in fairness to him, the question was, uh, sorry, the statement put to him was, well, this is the first time Queen of the South he- have won here in 50 years. Robbie's point was, it's not like they've been coming here four times a season. Oh, oh you're right. That, you're right, that, that makes it ex- uh, semi-acceptable. Or, you know, <laughs> no, that's not what he's saying. He's just meaning... <laughs> oh, do you know what, boys? They haven't been here in ages. Let's just give them a wee win to, to sort of rewrite history. Come on. Uh, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't help himself, does he, Robbie? No, and and I, think, I, think, I think this, in a nutshell, kind of sums up where we are because you, you even you even got three people here who just can't find kind of parity and agreement on the guy and and for me that just it slight, slightly contradicts what i said earlier on but f- for me that that's why it will ultimately i just don't think it will ever breed success because there's so much um just disagreement and, and just a disconnection amongst fans and amongst fans in the club and and that's just not a good environment for success is it and it's not even a good environment when the fans aren't turning up, you know, fifteen, sixteen thousand 16,000 every week. But can you imagine what it would have been like over the last few weeks if there had been <laughs> fans there ready to watch it? I mean, I was going to say exactly that. It would that. have just been, oh, it would have been poisonous. Yeah. yeah. I think, right, Adam, you raised it. What do you have to say about the English club comment? Because I think we're going to have different views here. Right. So, <laughs> he's right. However, However, after you've led us to the worst result in our history, you cannot say something along those lines. Surely there's got to be somebody at heart that takes them to the side and says, you cannot say that. Right. And this this is my biggest fear, because part and parcel of being a Hearts fan, I accept. But he's talking about, at the start of the season, kind of wanting to take us to the next level. I don't, we've just lost at home to Queen of the South. And he's coming out with supporting Man United and Man City. Right. You know, he's, and, and, and previously, sorry, mate, previously he's on about wanting to take us a step further in the Scottish Cup. I, I mean, is he at the wind-up? Is he deliberately trying to pull my pisser here? Because as far as I'm concerned, it's all right saying these things if things are going well. Don't, don't say it when your relationship with the fans, for as much as it's been... Decent at points, but for the majority... Well, I say majority. At times, it's been toxic. But it's now it is worse. Why on earth are you coming out and saying that? Right. I'm, I have a feeling we're going to have to have a tie break with Thomas here to be able to see who he feels is most correct. But my stance on it is that that quote was taken out of context and put on Twitter with just that. that quote, Right. What he's actually saying is, listen, if football fans wanted to win every week, they'd go and support Man City and Man United. Hearts fans aren't like that. They're wanting, they're going to stand by their club regardless of the situation. They're going to stand by their club when they're close to death and when they've had absolutely awful results. And we've let that fan base down, and that's unacceptable. He's not actually saying he no, fans go that. and support them. No, of course he's not. But Some I'm, folks it, seem to think I, they are, though. But after the week that he's had... Of course, yeah, that's why, the thing. Why are you saying that? Yeah, he's... I get the point where it's like, 
he's rubbish in the media because he is. He's just rubbish. Hold but, on, but wait, 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 hold on. Is this you that is saying that you don't care about what I'm? But I was just about to say I don't care if he's rubbish, because <laughs> <Right. laughs> I, I don't care what management and staff say in the press because it means nothing. As we have seen with Christoph Bear in the week going, that result was coming. However, we'll fix it, and then they Good don't Lord. fix it. <laughs> like when a former captain is saying that a defeat to Broader Rangers is coming. I mean, Thomas talked earlier about Anne Budge saving hearts. We'd have been as well just chucking it if that's your <laughs> What is that? <laughs> Goodness gracious me. A defeat to Aurora Rangers has been coming. And don't get me wrong, the episode that we deleted and took down, I said I was shitting myself for Aurora Rangers, <laughs> and rightly so. But as a former captain, why? And this is something else. Going back to Sports Sound, Craig Levine was talking about Christoph Berra not being vocal on Saturday. Is this the same Berra that was appointed skipper in Levine's tenure? You know, I get that he's not in charge of him anymore. And he's right that he should be going crazy. But does that not speak volumes about kind of the deep-rooted problems that we've got at Hearts? Thomas, I want to bring you in, but I just would like to say before I do, I love how Adam started the show going, I'm not going to rant in the last 15 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm it's listening that. to it as time goes by and thinking... Yeah, you know what? This is a nice casual chat, but then I re- I just I just recall stuff, and it makes my blood boil. And then I slagged Jeffrey. <laughs> that that started it. <laughs> that was like, like, I'm not having that happen. Uh, this, this is it. This has been your first and only appearance. It's been a blast having you on until you until you mentioned JJ. What a man. You should have the weekly feature where I just come on and slag Jeffers <laughs> off for some daft. That would be class. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be amazing. We, we'll negotiate right, now, that. Now, that sounds like a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, I've I, a little bit of experience in this field when it comes to media because I, I work within a sort of wider media team um, in, in, my, in my day job, right? So I, I kind of know how this goes. And Nielsen has tried his best, right, to say something that is going to resonate with fans. But the first thing you're it told... fucking has resonated. <laughs> oh, it, it certainly got us talking about him. Put it that way. But the, the the first thing that you need to do in any of these situations is don't create a headline. Uh, whether and and don't don't say something that can be taken out of context. Mm-hmm. It's not an easy thing to do. But in that set of circumstances, I don't think it's a particularly difficult thing to do. Um, you know, don't say essentially go and watch Man United and Man City if you want if you want to win games and be entertained. Like it's that's it's just it's just stupid. It's not thought through. It's not I, I have no doubt that one of the first things managers do after games is they think about I'm gonna be asked a bunch of questions here. What are my sort of stock answers? And basically what what you should do is no matter what you're asked, say what you want to say. It doesn't matter if you're asked what your name is, say how old you are. Do you know what I mean? Just say what you want to say. And he's been led by the interviewer into down a path where he said something that he just shouldn't have said. Um, so, aye, it's silly. I don't feel particularly sorry for him because he would have been told a hundred times by the guys in the media team at, at Tynecastle not to say stuff like that. So, you know, you've kind of made your, your bed there, Robbie. Um, so I, I'm sorry, Dan, but I'm kind of leaning towards the, the Adam take on this. And That's fine. <laughs> oh, that's su- right. suggesting. Get in there. That, um, that I think he's been a bit foolish in what he said, if I'm honest with you. And he's, he's left himself very open to these kind of comments. Listen, you've got to throw Adam a bone at some point. He doesn't get much <laughs> um, agreement with him. Right? No, you're bag on. And uh, uh, Thomas, it, it kind of resonates back to what you were saying earlier, because obviously Ryan Stevenson has also been very critical of Hearts uh, in the past week or so. Mm. He, of course, has spoken of his admiration for Jeffries um, on many a time. Do you think him coming out and sort of laying into these flops as it's been branded by by Edinburgh Alive um, and these crap signings, I mean, do you think he'd say that if he didn't hold Jeffries in such high esteem? Is this kind of... I mean, it it sort of is... I can see what you're saying and it sort of is down to Jeffries, but it can't be just solely him that's, you know, in charge of our scouting or whatever. No? Yeah, no, 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 you're right. And, I, and, and he definitely, you know, if, if he... I'm sure he's probably in, in reasonably regular contact with with Jeffries as well. So, I, I, I'm he'll, he'll know a lot more about the situation, uh, Ryan Stevenson, than, than any of us, I guess. But um, yeah, he, he wouldn't be absolutely tearing into Hearts if he knew that that Jeffries was pulling all the strings and calling all the shots. So that that probably does tell us something. Um, but yeah, at the same time, he's he's probably someone who's out there and he's passing a lot of comment, like a lot of Hearts fans are, and justifiably so. But he's 
I haven't seen any mention of of the role of the sort of chief football advisor and amongst the the club um, and 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 his take on it. So, yeah, I, I don't think he'd be about to. I don't think he'd about be about to throw his old manager under the bus. Um, and again, I, I really, I'm really, I'm I'm terrified now that we're going to come away from all this, and I'm going to be seen as this guy that hates Jim Jeffries and thinks it's all his fault. I I don't. I want to reiterate that I just don't think that he's necessarily the managerial solution to what we've got going on at the moment, even yeah, short term, <laughs> or bl- or blameless given these these crap signings, as Steve will so eloquently. Put. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, that, that is a fantastic transition into our second last point because. I actually have any of you guys been checking Twitter during this recording? No, no, we, I haven't. I'm going to check Twitter now because we may have confirmation of a signing. Oh, please don't. <laughs> um, what how, a way to ruin a Monday night! It's already a dull night of the week. Well, Good Lord. this is the thing. Um, if you've somehow missed it, and as I say, I can't see anything just now, but potentially. By the time that this podcast goes out, Hart and Midlothian will have made a signing that I don't think many people saw coming. Um, reportedly, 33-year-old, I think he is. Yes, I think that's right. I think that's right. Uh, not not the Logan right back that everybody thinks would be coming to the club. It's bloody Shea Logan from Aberdeen. Um Adam, what's happening? <laughs> oh, Thomas was on about Robbie making his own bed. I mean, Shea Logan. That's that's the signing to reunite yourself with the Hearts fan base. Goodness gracious me. How the mighty have fallen. I mean, how... No, just no. I'm not interested in us signing Shea Logan. For what? We've got we've got five, six games left in the league. We're two wins away from the title. Why? We're out of both cups. Why Why do we need to bring in... And do you know what? It's not even the fact that we're bringing him in on loan this season. It's the fact that we're viewing him as kind of a permanent deal after that. At 33. He'll be 34 in March. When, what is that? When's his birthday? Sorry, like? sorry, it's, already, it's already, uh, 34 in, in January. Oh. What is that? Well, Thomas, I imagine you're like the same as me, where you don't want to write off signings before they've even kicked a ball, but it does seem to be a peculiar signing. Yeah, very much so. I've actually got a little bit of inside knowledge on this one, guys. Um, <gasps> oh, but see, this one... is why we got you on. There's there's one man and one man only who's behind it, and it's Mister James Jeffries. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, do, do you know something that's a bit a bit strange about this? See, I, I saw that um, Smith was going to be going away for an international break, um, and I was kind of thinking, right, what what are the options here? Like we've, we've Halkett to right back, but that means that you've then got the horrendous pairing of Popescu and Berra at centre-back. I don't fancy that. I'd like to see us bring some kind of right-back in. Um, I actually remember at the time, um, I think it was in January, well, it must have been in January, um, or maybe when the, the loan window sort of was extended. I remember Nielsen saying, we are trying to bring in a, a right-back as kind of emergency cover mm-hmm. um, on, on the basis that we're going to be losing Michael Smith um, for a, a number of games. Um, and uh, the, the the club that he's at, they were kind of dragging their heels a little bit. And I remember at the time thinking, well, I wonder, wonder who that could be. I mean, it's going to be a premiership club, presumably. And, and I actually, in my mind, I kind of settled upon... Right, Shea Logan is not getting a game at Aberdeen. He's a reasonably experienced right For back. Who's, who's, <laughs> but he's, he's done an okay job at Aberdeen. Look, if we if we need to bring someone in who's going to cover right back whilst Smith is away and save us from having to watch a defensive central pairing of Christoph Berra and Popescu play against teams like Queen of the South <laughs> and ship three goals, then you know uh, that kind of thing makes sense. Mm-hmm. What doesn't make sense is those games coming and going and then bringing them in. I just, there's no, there's no benefit whatsoever 
to us bringing in Shea Logan. And I mean the guy no harm. I love how much he's wound up Celtic fans over the course of his career. Um, but we don't, we don't have any use for Shea Logan. We have a perfectly capable right back. One of the few people that I think we'd all be quite happy to come back up with us and be the right back in the, in the squad. And by all accounts, it sounds like we've got a pretty good young right back coming through who can deputise for him. So it's, it makes absolutely no sense to me. And I, I just don't understand it and I hope that it doesn't happen if I'm honest do you, so you're do fully you... expecting that confirmation soon then 100% if it hasn't if it hasn't come in already it's not maybe... coming already I can confirm it's not coming already however the rumour is is that it, the reason this is happening is because Nielsen is finished with Berra as we have seen that he's definitely going to be leaving and after Saturday Popescu that it means we're at full fitness this season we'll be lining up with a back four of Kingsley at left back Halkett and Smith as the two centre halves, and Shea Logan at right back. God help us! You dare really? Very is, that, is that what's being? That's, that what's being... That seems to be the the word on the Gorgie Street. Well, we be, so, yeah. be as well. We be as well just chucking this podcast now because the amount of expletives <laughs> that I'll use in this gracious me. I mean, there's there's Craig Halkett as well talking about. Kind of the last two games haven't been good enough. Oh, no shit. I'm just dreading to see the rest of the performances in this dire league. And beyond that, how uninspiring a back four is that? Good lord. Obviously, I, I imagine that isn't the plan for next season, even which then I certainly hope not. <laughs> which then Jesus adds more questions to the why are we signing Shea Logan permanently? Because obviously we'll hopefully have Suter back next year there's rumours that we're looking at Declan Gallagher he's definitely said it's he wants it's never going to happen it's never no going to happen uh, we're rumoured to be just looking generally at centre back position so you think okay next season we either will start with a back four of Kingsley Halkett Suter and Smith or Kingsley Smith Suter and an unnamed centre half so does Shea Logan then go deputise to Smith and if that's the case are we shunting Cammy Logan out again, Thomas? I, I would rather we didn't. I, I think this goes back to the earlier point about having a bit of faith in, in some young players. And he seems to be one that um, that gets talked about in, in pretty glowing terms. And, and I've only seen him play in a couple of friendly fixtures, but I've been... He's class in football by. manager. He's class in football <laughs> manager. Well, there you go. That's, that's all we need to know. Now, look, I, I'm, I'm really... It's, it's quite concerning hearing that why how many games we've got left five five why i mean i i I don't i don't really rate popescu particularly highly um but he's he's pretty much played all season we are where we are in the league um you know just just let him see out the season and and you know with halkett next to him smith and right back where he should be and kingsley hopefully can get get back fit and play at left back if he can't then fine we'll deal with ad white for a few games but yeah, I, I don't, I don't understand the the clamour to to suddenly fully reshuffle everyone's positions in the back line because he's fed up with Popescu and, and Berra supposedly. It'd be, it'd be interesting to see how this goes, then, guys. But I'm not, I'm not in support of us signing Shea Logan um, for for any purpose, really. I just, I just don't think it makes any sense. <laughs> I do feel <laughs> quite bad. For, I do feel quite bad for him. He's going to be the first sign in the history that is unanimously hated by the entire support. <laughs> <laughs> However, we do have to finish up. We do realise, apologies by the way, this has been our longest one ever, but we just really enjoy chatting. So therefore, we're only going to be like, and also look at the week we've had, for God's <laughs> sake. If we had only been able to make 40 minutes out of this, we would have been able to just speak about Christoph Berra leaving, that would have been it. However, we do go to East End Park this weekend, the place that was our first loss of the season, a very comfortable loss for Dunfermline as they just dominated us. One of us. the better losses. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Stephen Kingsley scored. There, there's a positive spin for you. Uh, Adam, I, I want to hear more losses. of that. I want to hear more of that from you. One of the better losses that we've had this season. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is me caving into positivity, mate. That's as far as it goes. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Now, I was saying, I oh, feel terrible, I can't remember your name, I'm very sorry, but a guy on Twitter I was speaking to um, confirmed we can basically 
mathematically win the league on Saturday, but not really. So, if we win the league on Saturday, we go 16 points clear, with Wraith and Dunfermline only having a maximum of 15 points left to play for, with games in hand. I was going to say, and the game in hand is on the night of this uh, podcast going out, because they play one another at Starks Park um, Tuesday night. Of course it is. Yeah, so that'll be be an interesting one, a wee Fife derby, and obviously the pars, I watched some um, against Dundee on, on Saturday. What a superb start. 2 nil up after five minutes. But then you could tell that Stevie Crawford's been Robbie Nielsen's assistant because for then on, Dunfermline looked oh, just really negative. And to be honest, Dundee, it was no surprise to see them kind of haul themselves back into the game and ultimately go on and win the game after that. So this will be tough, mate. Very well, that, tough. that Dundee side is the reason... We can't mathematically win the league because right? they play St Johnston in the Scottish Cup this weekend. Oh, of course. Which means they will have a potential 18 points to play for if they win all their games. If basically the only way we can't win the league if we win on Saturday is if Dunfermline win every single one of their games. That is the only way they have to win. So Dunfermline have to win the five derby basically to keep it alive. Yes. Yes. Even then. Um, but yeah. So that that's the situation, basically. Uh, Thomas, do you imagine there will be any wholesale change? Do you think we will see the apparent debut of the new signing, Shay Logan? Or what would you... More importantly, actually, what kind of team would you want to see? Oh, sorry, Daniel. Just to say that Hearts have completed the loan signing of Shay Logan until the end of the season. Seriously? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah I swear. There it is. That changes my answer. Okay. <laughs> well done, Adam. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, just to confirm that, and he said, I want to help the club get the league wrapped up and show people what I can do. When I play for a football team, fans will know that I always give 110%. It's fucking yeah. wrapped up, she. And then it's got him, obviously, with the uh, with a shirt. So, yeah, that's that confirmed. So, sorry. Oh, he looks, he looks absolutely there. delighted to be here, mm-hmm. by the way. As, de- as delighted as we are to see him, obviously. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, well, look, Nielsen's obviously signed him for a reason, hasn't he? Um, so I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him play. Maybe, I was going to say maybe game one is, would, would be deemed a bit too soon for him, but, but there's only five games. So, yeah, he's, he's obviously been brought in for a reason. I, I don't want to see Michael Smith shifted into centre-back, if I'm honest with you. I know he's perfectly capable in that role, but I'm I'm much happier with him at right-back because I think he's he's one of the few good attacking outlets we have, believe mm-hmm. it or not. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I would, if you were asking me to, to, to say what I would like my lineup to be, oh God, I don't know. Obviously, we've got uh, Craig coming back in goals, much needed. Um, yeah, I'm, I don't particularly rate Popescu, but I'd, I'd be okay with him and Halkett being the centre back pairing um, and Smith and presumably White being the left back. Mm. Um, I mean, again, how, how much do you change it? Uh, yeah. I, I, I think, believe it or not, I think Halliday's kind of been. Okay, um, over the last few games, or maybe not, maybe not brilliant, but compared to what's been round about him, I, I think he's been okay. Um, I, it's, it's difficult. I think we we need to play the the, the two up front um, in Boyce and, and Nondwili, and we need to hope that the players round about them actually give them some kind of supply. Um, I, I personally, I would like to see uh, Henderson's um, substitute appearance rewarded um, finally. Um, with a start um, because I'm just fed up with the, the experienced and in inverted commas wingers getting the nod ahead of them and not doing anything um, with the long spells that they get in the team so I'd like to see Henderson play um, but beyond that it's, it's you know, take your pick really and, and, and hope for something good to happen on the park um, but, I, but if I'm honest I don't feel great about the game uh, this weekend and um, if if I was given if I was to put all my money on on one side to win it, I'd probably be putting it on the, the home side. I, I don't think you'll find many people disagreeing with you there. Adam, are you one of the people that disagree or are you also the same, not feeling very confident at all? You know me, mate. I wasn't I think that answers for, for Brora Rangers. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, you, you, know, you know the answer before you've asked the question. Um, <laughs> this would just be hilarious. This would be typical hearts. <laughs> And that we'll pull a result out of the bag. And we'll just kid on that everything's all right. That the past like fortnight hasn't happened. Um, what do you want me to say? We're a couple of wins away. If the squad can't get up for this game, then they don't deserve to be here. It really is as simple as that for me. I think that is 
pretty fair. I'm going to do what we do now. I'm going to go round and get your score predictions. Adam, I'll start with you. What is your score prediction? Do you know what? I've also spoken to uh, Dave on the Talk Scottish Football Championship show that I do, and he's a massive Dunfermline fan. And obviously my, my pars pals from college, um, I don't think either of that trio are particularly confident. I can sort of see a, a dull draw, if I'm honest. I was about to say what a shit game this is going to be if na- yeah. nobody's up for it. <laughs> Watch it be nil-nil. I'll say one all and be optimistic. An optimistic draw. How, <laughs> An optimistic how delightful. Draw. <laughs> Thomas, how are you feeling? Yeah, no, let's let's go draw then. Let's try and be positive. I think if I had to sort of tip one team, I'd probably be edging towards Dunfermline and that's a pretty depressing thing. But um, yeah, let, let's say draw. I think something to remember is um, Craig White and obviously isn't going to be able to play and he's been a big part of uh, anything that's been good for, for them over the course of the last five or six weeks. Um, so even just taking him out of the team and, and presumably putting someone else in who hasn't had as much game time, that, that might help us a little bit. Um, but yeah, let's 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 say draw one each. Three nil hearts. Come on! <laughs> Goodness, I'll have some of whatever you're smoking. We've got this <laughs> now. I've now very much similar to you, Adam. Just given up, so I'm just going to go. No, fuck it. I want four to us because I want an exciting game for once. So I just want hundreds of goals and for us to win. It's not going to happen. Like it's absolutely going to be a stodgy one nil loss. That's my actual prediction. 1-0 Dunfermline. But if 4-2 comes in, I'm an oracle. But it's not a very confident standpoint. And generally, it's not been the most upbeat podcast. However, if there is a single upbeat Hearts podcast right now, then they need shot, to be honest, because I don't care what you've got uh, to be upbeat about. However, massive thank you all for listening. The support in the last couple of weeks has been insane, which has been the only positive of massive the last thank couple you for weeks. all that, folks. Absolutely. And of course, a massive thank you to Thomas for coming on. We hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you don't get too many death threats. <laughs> love it, guys. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, sorry to all the, the Jeffries fans out there. Um, I, I love him too, but I think I think he's, he's had a little role to play in, in what we've seen this season. <laughs> I love that you're just still going for it as well. You're not even <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> Got my shovel here. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, so we are Perth to Paisley. You can get us on everything at Perth to Paisley, even YouTube. Please leave us a review on your podcast platform of choice. It's massively, massively helpful. Thomas, where can people get you on the internet? Yeah, you follow me at uh, TS underscore nickel if, if you want. Um, wouldn't blame me if you don't want to. Um, like like Dan said at the top of the show, I do, I do a bit of uh, writing and podcast hosting for um, the fourth official. Um, so, yeah, if you if you like your um, your Scottish football coverage with a, just a slight hint of Rangers bias, then that's your that's your place to go. <laughs> but all I can say is that um, I don't I don't run the Twitter feed there. I, I can promise you some uh, some unfiltered hearts, uh, hearts biased content there if you if you want to give the fourth official a follow as well well both those links will be in the description to this as well so please please do get involved adam where can they get you on twitter well you can catch all my manchester city related tweets preparing <laughs> for a tough trip to leicester or manchester united propaganda ahead of the red devils hosting brighton on sunday you've had this fucking adam, planned add adam to you can do it and what about yourself mate i am at d mcivor 22 we'll be back next week to cover the inevitable Dunfermline loss, Shay Logan's Man of the Match debut, and a whole lot more. But until then, we'll see you next time. Keep the faith, Monday JTs! <laughs> <laughs>